from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel and we're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight our first guest is the Seroptimus International, specifically the Lake Oswego and West Lynn Club. And representing Seroptimus is Pamela Banning, the club secretary. Welcome, Hi. Pamela. Thank you. And Tara Lawrence, the public uh, awareness committee member. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So maybe you can tell me to start out. I, I, I'm familiar with Seroptimus because we do some work with them here in the Gresham area when we um, we taped the teddy bear parade, and, and I've talked with a lot of Seroptimus about some of the great work they do, specifically for and about women. Is that right? Tell me if you could, one of you, what um, maybe a little bit about the, the mission itself of the Seroptimus. Sure. Our mission is to improve the lives of women and children through raising public awareness and resources centered around the issues of child abuse, sex trafficking, and domestic violence. Mm, all areas that are really a lot in the news lately too. Most definitely. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so as, as when you focus on the women, this is not just locally, this is all over the world, is it not? That's correct. Yeah. That's correct, yes. There are um, many uh, organizations, many members, there's um, thousands, tens of thousands of members wow. um, in different clubs. Uh, and, in, across the world, um, and there's maybe about seven or eight clubs just here in the Willamette Valley. Oh wow, that's quite right. a few. Mm -hmm. About how long has it, have the Seroptimus been an organization? Do you know that? Since the actual 20s, 1920s. Oh wow. Well, I don't remember that. Right. So, <laughs> so um, what exactly do you do in, in, as far as an organization? I mean, you have certain events and programs. Uh, do you meet on a regular basis? What What do you do? So we um, we do meet on a regular basis, and we have in our strategic plan for particular areas. So we have programs of which Tara can talk about the different things that we'll do with the community to mm -hmm. raise public awareness about the issues that are at hand. Um, and then we have a separate set of uh, information for the members. Um, as personal development can also oh. can be something that can take place within the club, as well as wearing, raising their awareness and helping work towards their passions. Oh, that's um, right. So. And then we have fundraising. I mean, the, this wouldn't be sustainable if we, uh, if we didn't have a way of uh, collecting money, so we would like to talk about some of our fundraising events. And then um, in April, early April, we'll actually have an awards ceremony where we're distributing the fruits of all of our labors oh, from 2012. Wonderful. Just that, really that's great. That's like the culmination it of is. all your hard work. Um, I think we have a few pictures of some of the meetings and kind of give us an idea of the sort of the demographic of, the, of, the, of your organization. You have all sorts of women from all walks of life, is that right? What, we what really can, do. What can you tell me about your, say your club specifically? It's like us, we go Westland. Is it, is it a diverse group of people? Is it, it is pretty diverse. We have both um, actively employed people, currently unemployed people, retired people. Uh, we have women who are uh, bankers, professional bankers. Mm -hmm. We have attorneys. And what are we, um, what are we looking analysts. at here? Is this a group of some oh, of those Oh, sure. Women? So we're at Bullseye Coffee down in West Lynn. Okay. Uh, and this is one of our induction ceremonies where we were bringing new members into the club. Oh, nice and relaxed and informal. It looks like yes. fun. It looks like fun. So it, it, you know, for all the different types of people and professions, there's something that's happened in our own lives that gives us a passion in wanting to reach out and help other women, and that is that common thread. Um, that j just ties us together. Yeah, that's right. great. And is this one of your meetings? Yes, this is one of our general meetings. Uh, Pacific West Bank on 10th Street in mm -hmm. Lake in West Lynn uh, offers their community room for us uh, free of charge. Um, and so we'll, we'll meet the first Wednesday of each month there. This photo is uh, the induction of the chapter. We're only three years old. Oh, so you're a new one. Yeah. So we're pretty new, right. Now, does every chapter have their own focus, or do you all pretty much have the same four areas that you work on all the different chapters? I'll, I'll answer that. We actually have three focus, we've selected three focus areas, and they are for to focus on child abuse, mm -hmm. the trafficking. sex trafficking, mm -hmm. not human trafficking, but sex trafficking and domestic violence. Okay, okay. So, 
tell me, how, how do you go about doing that? I mean, that, those are really broad areas. Um, and what can you do to make a difference? I, obviously, it's, it's a lot of public education, raising awareness. How do you go about doing that? With regard to our public awareness, we've created these panel discussions that have been really quite successful. And what we've done is we would publicize the event and mm -hmm. we would invite the experts within the field mm -hmm. of these three areas. So we'd pick a subject matter and mm -hmm. then we would invite, say, a panel, usually somewhere around four or five panelists. And they'd be members from, say, the Clackamas County DA's office, Clackamas okay. County Sheriff's office. People Depart that are right in the right in the right in of the things, thick yeah. of it, mm -hmm. right? Members of DHS, the Department of Human Services, CASA members, court-appointed special mm -hmm, advocates, mm -hmm. and then also we'd have some members that are of some nonprofit organizations that are there. So collectively coming together to share resources, ideas, and information. Now, when you have those, are those open to the public, or are those just for the uh, Seroptimus? Those are open to the public. Okay. We encourage public, okay. the okay. public to come and to okay. attend. Good. So you're sponsoring the, the event, you're putting it on for the public. Absolutely, and we hope to incre yeah. increase our membership by holding these events Good. and increase the public awareness, but we'd love to recruit new members, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you said something, Pamela, about uh, everybody has their own passion, and, and I think a lot of that comes from whatever has gone on in your own life or what you've heard about, maybe a neighbor or somebody you know who maybe has been the victim of domestic violence, or they grew up next door to somebody who you know abused their child, or you know whatever. You there's always you know everybody has a little story to tell. Mm -hmm. Do, um, wh what kinds of things have, have motivated you to become part of Seroptimus? You don't have to tell me great personal stories, but what what motivates you to to do this? I tend to be a bit of a giver anyway, so I love to volunteer. I love education type events. I love working with children, mm. and um, I really like the feeling in my heart that comes about at the end of one of the board meetings when we have decided we're going to be distributing over $4,000 in money to people who don't even know it yet. Wow. They're at the same time that we're working on the fundraising, the awards committee is out uh, soliciting the uh, uh, applications from uh, we have two main awards. The Violet Richardson Award is for high school girls who are active in volunteering in their community. Oh, and right. then also for the Women's Opportunity Award, which is for uh, f uh, women who are the single uh, wage earners within their families and they're, they're looking to make a better impact on their on their lives by having a higher education. Oh, so the money goes toward their education. The money goes to financial resources towards their education. So how do you find these women? That, uh, do they apply for these positions? Are they nominated? How does that work? It's, it's all through applications. Okay. Um, and so we try to uh, bang the drum as loud as we can. That's why we're so mm -hmm. grateful to Metro East for Good. allowing us to have a few minutes tonight to talk about this because um, when you can uh, reach out to the community either through sponsorship with the events or maybe they have a place where we can show a, v a DVD mm -hmm. about one of our areas of focus um, or we can have a panel discussion there. It's that interaction, and you never know who's in the room that needs to hear what's right, being said right. tonight. It might be so somebody personally, or do, they know somebody. Exactly. Right. All we want to do is put the platform out there and be what it what it is, come what may. The, um, the people that need to hear it will hear it eventually. Good, so. good. So tell me about this, uh, this event where you um, actually give the awards. What, how does that work? So the New Beginnings uh, Award Ceremony is going to be on April 10th, so okay. just in a couple of weeks. Yes. It's on a Wednesday evening, and it's going to be held down at the Holy Names Heritage Center, which is a beautiful it building on the Merrillhurst Merrill campus Hurst. Mm -hmm. down in Lake Oswego. Uh, and during that evening, we have um, many people invited, but the public is also invited to, to come as well. Um, and the, like I said, the Violet Richardson Award winner will be named. Um, that's a, that's a that's young girl. That's the high school, high school girl, girl, right? She's been very active in her community. She has been uh, volunteering on several different levels with Red Cross youth, with arts for the underprivileged children. So you're children. talking about the person that's going to get it that's this year. That's actually going to get ah. the award this year. And now year. Do they, does she know? Yes, she yes, does. She does. Okay. Yes, she does. So tell me again what, what, she, what she does. She volunteers with the Red Cross and she, what else? She formed um, a, a Red Cross youth chapter with, uh, near her high school. Um, and she actually had several other events that are escaping me at the moment, but the one that she's most proud of is she was cr creating an art program for underprivileged youth to oh, allow right. them to express themselves. Wow. Right. Wow. So what, what 
is it the intention of the award? What um, besides honoring that person, is there is there a monetary portion? There to is it? a monetary portion to it at the club level, and then she will go on. Her application will go on to the regional level, and then on to the district or, and on to the national level. So there's an app. There's um, so, so like, a greater like a capability for some kind of? rolling type. I, ha I hate to think of it as a competition, but in the end, there are only several finalists, right? Right. right? right. So, so essentially, yes. it is, but it's based on all right. good work, so nobody's really a loser. Mm -hmm. The well women's yeah. the women's opportunity award um, also has that capability of where there'll be a monitor monetary gift for that woman, mm -hmm. and then her application goes on to the regional and the national level as well. Um, and then we also are distributing awards to six different organizations uh, in the area uh -oh. that it provided for information. So um, Family Life Skills of Oregon okay. is receiving tuition for two women. Youth Villages of Oregon is receiving money for clothing for children that mm. are, have been admitted to their sexually exploited children's program. Oh, wow. Uh, Clackamas County Victims Assistance Department is receiving some money for emergency clothing and um, toiletry kits. Uh, the Children's Center, as well as um, Healthy Start and Healthy Families of Clackamas County. And then finally, the layup program for the Westland Food Bank. Wow, that's a lot. Of, that, that's a lot, a lot to cover. To, you know, to, to spend the year planning on the yeah. programs, planning on the fundraising, and, and then you don't know what the dollar amount's going to be, but people come forward with their applications. And, and I guess part of this... Uh, show as well would be to let people know that come 2013, 2014, 2015, this club wants to help the communities. So if, if there's an organization out there that uh, needs some assistance or um, somebody, is it just organizations get it, or if there's somebody who is a youth who has done a lot in the community, they, they can apply, apply themselves for this award? Right. Is that right? Yes. Or the women that are trying to better themselves That's and right. further their education. That's right. So typically in the fall, we'll have the call for uh, applicants to come out. And we're trying to feel uh, how's the best way to get the mm -hmm. word out. Yeah. Each yeah. of the clubs in the area, each of the clubs around the world are in that same time period are also soliciting for applications for right. their awards. So sometimes if there's more applications than money available in one club, there can be some sharing of the applications oh, so great. that um, we can continue to pass it on. Stuff. It, it is, does amazing things. Great. Absolutely. It? That's great. So um, if, if people are interested in any one of those, um, the website is probably the best place to go, would you, would you say? Probably at this point, so we're so new that email would probably okay. be the best to go okay. at the moment. Yeah, we are working on the website. Good, but, um, good. Yeah, the email, get in touch with us directly. Uh, anyone who wants to be a member, be a club member, is more than welcome to come and visit the, the general meeting um, or so call So if somebody talk. were interested, they could just maybe call you up and say, I'd like to come to your next Absolutely. meeting and sit in and check it out and, and, yes. uh, and go from there. Right. I bet you have a lot of great women there that are, I bet you become friends. Absolutely. <laughs> Even the ones that aren't originally, am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You meet great friends. Women mm -hmm. like-minded. Yeah. Without a doubt, yeah. sharing their passion, like you said. Right. People right. coming for a variety of reasons, but bringing together their knowledge and experience and their passion and right. commitment. How do you choose the organizations that you choose to help? I mean, how, that, it seems like that would be a really difficult decision, as well as the woman, you know, the entrepreneur, the, or the person needs to, you know, further their education, and the, the Violet, Rich, is it Richards or Richardson? Richardson. Award, Richardson Award. Right. How do you make those decisions? That'd be very difficult. It, it is very difficult. Yeah. Um, as uh, any of the members can tell you, they probably they volunteer for a number of committees, and the mm -hmm. awards committee is one that gets to uh, do the solicitation for the applications, and but then also makes the proposal to the board of where how the money should be distributed. Yeah. I bet it's very rewarding, though, especially when the people get those awards. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot, of, a lot of happy faces, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. right. So you have. Um, something else going on you said you have the harvest what is the it? harvest festival the harvest will be festival. in september okay so that that's is a little ways main, away but a, that's oh, a big deal please right please save the date okay. because we just have a wonderful time out at lee's farms in tualatin oh, uh, it okay. starts at two o'clock in the afternoon on saturday september 21st okay and during that day uh, we just encourage all the families to come out there is a, a country western band, so there's line dancing. There's all oh, the fun. fun things to do at Lee's Farms, all the children's and games. September is usually gr a great it's month. That's right. a great yeah. month. It's yeah. great. It's and then we have. My birthday, a, everybody make a We have. Yeah. A, <laughs> for sure. Save that day. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Right. 
<laughs> we assemble raffle baskets. So we, um, in the recent months or recent years, we've done um, different animal themes. So we had a frog basket, a cow oh, basket, cute. a horse basket, and we had raffling going off on that. The kids were in love with the cakewalk, though. Oh yeah, an old-fashioned cakewalk. An old-fashioned cakewalk. They were walking away with so many goodies and oh, just coming cute. right back around. As soon as one cakewalk was over, they'd run back in line and stand there oh, and wait for the so next cute. one to that's start. Great. So, I remember a lot those. of fun. <laughs> um, I think we have some pictures from the harvest festival from last year, probably or, or mm -hmm. past year. So right, is, this is one right. Of them, so right? in that main barn there at Lee Farms, we have um, a couple of tables of information, of course, because you never know who is in the audience that might need some assistance of different help. So there's referral sources there, as well as since it is our fundraising time, um, there's raffle tickets for oh, sale good, there. Good. And, and hey, that, and then we you can. adore the sponsors. Um, they have a great time. The sponsors are each awarded tickets, um, and if they can't come, they donate the tickets back. And we reach out to, for instance, this last time we reached out to the military assistance oh. office and for said, "Please have your families and, come yeah, and enjoy great. the day on us." That's wonderful. So um, <laughs> we are so motivated and enthusiastic, as you can see <laughs> can from see our members. Um, it's it's a lot of planning for the day. It's an excellent day for the execution, and then at the evening, you're exhausted, but you can hardly wait for the next meeting to find out how it went. That's great. It looks like you have a lot of fun, so that's the important <laughs> thing, right? For ladies. Yeah. Right. So Are here we have a, a winner of one of the baskets yeah. a and a basket. winner of the, of the cakewalk and then one of the frog basket there is on the right. That's so cute. So. That looks like many, many fun. laughs. It's fun. Then here's oh, the cakewalk. Cake right. Yeah. So we have young and young at heart people as well will um, walk the cakewalk. Um, and just sit on the hay bales, and it takes a little bit. You know, if they haven't seen it before, it takes a little bit of uh, training there on to get them to understand you know, how only that all one works. person per bale, but um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun, and they soon, very soon, get the hang of it. And uh, actually, get, just get dizzy walking around in yeah, circles. I can imagine. <laughs> it's fun. Oh, so okay. lots of lots of laughter, and then a lot of creativity goes in That's to the, the decorations. Uh, that is logo. our Sorrentino lo logo there, yeah. right, carved into the pumpkin. That's good. That's good. So oh, that looks like a fun event. That looks great. Thank you. Yeah. So have you done this? Is this the second year you've done it or the? We are now year? closing three years. So you yes. have done this every year. Yes, we've done this it each year. This is your signature event. We, it is our yes. signature event. We also, shortly on the heels of that, we'll do a, um, a, a wreath sale. Oh, wreath okay. and holiday basket sale. Okay. Um, it's to a smaller level at the moment, but um, it, again, it just adds to that general fund that allows yeah. us to um, to, to support the, awards, the organizations right? and the, and the mm -hmm. programs that you want mm -hmm. to. What, um, what do you need as far as volunteers? Are people, you need people to come and be part of, of Seroptimus, women that are interested. It's women. It can be it, men as well. Can be? Okay, yes. that's a good thing to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anybody that has a passion for um, it's helping women, empowering women, and mm -hmm. I love it that you're working with the youth and bringing them up that way because Absolutely. you, know, you got to start there. Right. So uh, obviously you're encouraging people to join or to become part of it. Um, what about organizations that might want to help out the Soroptimus toward, toward these goals that, you're, that you've set for these specific programs? That'd be outstanding. Yeah. I think that really in this market, in the economy, it really takes a lot of creativity among organizations mm -hmm. and nonprofits. So collaboration with different organizations with Seroptimus is certainly ideal. And you're really seeing that across across the it's nation. It's not the only way to do it anymore. It really yeah, is. Especially when the recession started, these nonprofits started working together. And right. It's, they've done amazing things. Right, mm -hmm. to co-sponsor and pay right. for the coffee and donuts together right. and then bring a crowd. Yeah. yeah. Instead of competing against each other, work right. together, you can accomplish a whole lot yeah, more. Yeah, I That's think collaboration is key. And yeah. we've really been leveraging good collaboration. And the Clackamas County and Lake Oswego areas have been wonderful. The, the experts and professionals coming out and lending their expertise. Wow. Okay, so domestic violence, uh, child abuse, and sex trafficking are the three areas that you're most focused on. So if there right. are women or men out there that are interested in, in you know, working on those causes, this would be a good place for them to, to get involved. Very good. Yeah. Very yeah. welcome place for them. Before we're out of time, tell me anything else. What else do I need to know about Seroptimus International? Oh. Yeah, we had time. talked about well, that we come from all different walks of life. We all have different professions. Yeah. I'm, I'm an attorney. You used to be a district attorney. Uh -huh. Pam is in the. I'm in the medical records division. Uh -huh. I'm with uh, just a, a data analyst for 3M. Um, we talked about some of the other professions. Mm -hmm. It's. Um, 
So Quite a, a diverse cross. group. It is a very diverse that's great, group. That's great. But then you get to know each other and you're all the, right. we're all, we're all the same in here. So that's great. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for being here tonight. I appreciate thank you, it. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Monica. This has been our first episode of Community Hotline. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about the Seroptimus International. Specifically, this is the Lake Oswego and West Lynn Club. They're doing terrific work in the area. So if these things that we've talked about tonight are part of your passion or you want to get involved, please do contact them. You can go to one of their meetings. You can find out more on their website. And they have events coming up that you don't want to miss, so be sure to check that out. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we'll be back in just a few moments, so stay tuned. Volunteers are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Want to help homeless animals? There are countless volunteer opportunities with Multnomah County Animal Services. There's always a lot to do when caring for almost 10,000 animals a year. Our shelter is at the forefront of animal care with some of the most progressive programs in the nation, and we depend on volunteers to keep those programs running. From showing cats to potential owners, to training dogs in the shelter, to fostering a shelter pet in your home, you can help your community by volunteering your time and talents with Animal Services. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. Volunteer. KZME Radio is a new station that is committed to entertain, inspire, and connect our community through programming that celebrates local music, arts, and culture. It was created to put local music and local arts on local radio, and it is a vehicle for our creative community to gain exposure while also celebrating what the Portland metro area has to offer. Hey folks, I'm Mike Midlow from the band Pancake Breakfast. What's so cool about KZME? Well, it's local music. You know, you can't go to every live show. Believe me, I've tried. So you can tune into KZME and hear a bunch of music that you might not get to see otherwise. Why should you support KZME? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you like Portland Town, USA, homegrown music, independent radio, and if you believe in the powers of rock and roll, then contribute to KZME. It's music where you live. My favorite thing about community media is how people find their voice and tell their story. It's the message of, by, and for a community. We're a gathering place because it gets people of all sorts of different backgrounds underneath one roof. It's art. It's technology. A snapshot of our community. Going live in three, two, one. The League of Women Voters makes history. Our country would not be the same without their dedication. Formed by women who organize to win women the right to vote. It is now a co-ed organization. Studying, informing, and acting. Nonpartisan. Grassroots. Influential. Taking political stands on many issues. The League of Women Voters encourages all citizens to be informed and active in government. Join, Join the, the League, League of Women, Women Voters, Voters of East Multnomah, Multnomah County, County in, in making history, history today. today. Hi, I'm Luke Perry. You're watching Metro East. Over 25 years of great community media.
alone, our reach is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own, we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary, humanity in motion. Hi, welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Thanks for staying tuned, because now we're going to be talking with Ride Connection, one of my favorite guests here at Metro East. Uh, representing Ride Connection, we have Trink Easterday. You are the Community Outreach Specialist. Yes, thank you. And Leslie Garth, the Transportation Coordinator out here in East County. Thanks for being here. You have been here quite a few times, Leslie. Yes. And I'm always happy to see you here. Trink, you've not been on the show before. What, what exactly? Um, well, first of all, tell me a little bit about Ride Connection. Anybody that watches the show knows what a great job you do and the services you provide, but could one of you kind of just give me a quick overview of Ride Connection and what your services are? Our services are um, based on human need, and the need is for transportation, which is viewed really as one of the paramount basic human needs mm -hmm. um, in our community. So we provide transportation resources for older adults and those with disabilities, actually beyond Gresham into the whole Tri-County area. Right, right. So it's a rather large area, is it? Yes. So Multnomah, Washington, mm -hmm. Clackamas County. If numbers Sorry. speak, if people can equate numbers to people, last year we gave over 410,000 rides. Wow. That's a lot of rides. It's a lot of rides. That's a lot of rides. A lot of moving of people. Yeah, yeah. And, and people use you for all sorts of things. It's not just going to the doctor exactly. or going to the grocery store. What are some of the other things that people use your services for? Uh -huh. where, where do they go? Well, you know, the, it varies. I mean, you have husbands or spouses that may be in a nursing home exactly. and they want to go see their They want to go see, see their them. spouse. Yeah, that would be good. Exactly. So we yeah. do quite a few trips. Um, provide quite a few trips that way and then we you know people may want to go to the senior center mm, good example right, right across right. the street Gretchen senior center is right down um, the street yeah. to take classes to have lunch um, mingle with their own peers so so some of it's just social a lot of it's social okay. um, you know to me I, Which is I, important. it's very important yeah. you know because I can imagine being locked in 24-7 uh, mm -hmm. myself but so it's, it's a very important for the seniors to get out and get out in the community um, been known to take people to go see friends, especially during the holidays. Mm. Um, you know, we do do quite a bit of the doctor's appointments, and we do quite a bit of shopping trips. Um, you know, we don't. But the good thing about it is that um, when we're looking at a schedule or something, we we don't um, look at. Um, Going grocery shopping is more important than going to visit your husband. Important. It's all yes. important. No every, discrimination. Every, every trip is important to us. I mean, um, so I know it's important to our clients, and so Good. we just try to fulfill um, everyone's request. Good. Well, like Trink said, it's a it's a human need, uh, yes. you know, to, to to be transported to wherever you need to go. And if if you're at, a, at an age where you are not able to drive anymore, or for a disability or whatever reason you cannot drive anymore, or um, you know, don't, are not able to see well enough, or just don't have transportation and need right. that extra, if you're not able to take the bus or the max. Then, then this is a great alternative that's available. What um, do, you, do you have regulars? Do you have people that always that, that uh, are there, there like every week and they're at like clockwork. Or? Yeah, you know, and I guess the good example for us in East County would be the we have one driver that's designated to take people to and from the county building, which housed the Mills on Wheels mm -hmm. and the Gresham Senior Center, and then they also have um, clinics on oh, the first okay. and second and third floor. Okay. No, second and third floor. There we go. And so that's You're a on hot the first floor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's a hot spot. So yeah. um, we're always transporting. So and we have people that regularly volunteer at Meals and Wheels faithfully five days a week. Yes, we do have quite a few regulars that just go there. So are you saying you have people that are volunteers at Meals and Wheels who mm -hmm. ride with Ride Connection yes. to get to their volunteer yes. job? Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So win win. 
Yeah, that is. It, it is. is. <laughs> it is. It truly is. That's like we were talking about our last segment, the collaboration between nonprofits. And, oh, absolutely. You know, that's, that's really important. So, Trink, tell me, as a community outreach specialist, what exactly do you do? I have the great privilege of encouraging people to volunteer as primarily drivers. And um, the rewards are so much greater than you know, the time spent, um, the stories that they're able to share and just having the one-to-one -one, um, time with another individual. Yeah. We also offer reimbursement to our drivers mm, and okay. that's important. And I thought... Because um, it is that their own car, is it sometimes their own car and sometimes not, correct? Right. Okay. People can choose to drive their own car or to drive one of our buses, okay. vans. Yeah. Um, and I thought during your last, um, our last paragraph or two ago that our um, customers do not pay for the services of Ride Connection. They are certainly encouraged to give a donation. Mm, okay. and a whatever they're Thank able you to comfortably and, and, right. and a smile, but that's, that's it. So we're really there um, to assist. Okay, so tell me about the drivers. What does it take to be a driver for Ride Connection? You um, need to have had five years of driving experience. Um, we will do a background check on everyone, a criminal background check. That's good, that's reassuring. Um, we will do a DMV check. And then um, we need to see proof of their, if they are driving their own car, of their own driver's insurance sure. and their driver's license. Okay. And um, most importantly for them, we offer superb training. Oh, how long uh, is the program. training? Is it they a one-time training? Is that? I, no, it's no. ongoing. No. Um, there's. The training, there's um, what we call a couple of in-class trainings, but they know, we don't call them in-class training now because you can do it online. Oh, so we yeah. kind of streamline that. Um, it's a couple of classes that just mandatory to take is best ride and safe at any age. And what those classes do is teach you some basic defensive um, methods of driving, mm -hmm. and then it teach you how to deal with people with disabilities. Oh, okay. And um, those classes are required um, either two or three years depending on your age and um, because now they're online you can get it done within an hour and yeah. move on and it makes it, makes it, easy, it makes it a lot easier yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's so we kind of streamline that it's, That's great. it's so, it's so did you used to have to teach the classes no no <laughs> <laughs> no I don't know how well that would go over no. you know uh, I would get sidetracked yeah. you know, you'd be telling some, your personal stories yeah, exactly you? so it would be a lot longer than what it should be so no I don't do that now mm -hmm. Leslie you have done some driving I for do a quite connection. a bit of driving I've been with Right Connection uh, approximately seven and a half years now. Yeah. Love my job. I love the people that I interact with. We do a great job. Um, out here in East County, we've been averaging about 1,600 trips a month. Wow, that's so a lot. Um, it is a lot, yeah. but you know, we are volunteer heavy, so we're able to do that because of the wonderful volunteers that we do have and, and that we need wow. also. Even though we're, that sound like a huge number for a small entity out here, we still have people not able to get their trip requests. Really? So you yes. can still use plenty of drivers. Oh, always. Yeah. So um, it doesn't need to be a commitment of a whole day. Okay, it that was my next question. Do you, how much of a time commitment is it to become a volunteer? You know, I think the hardest, I think the most time commitment that we require is the upfront, is the trainings. Okay. Um, as far Which as doesn't sound like it's that. No, much it's of a not. Time not commitment. anymore. Anyway, yeah. it's, it's great. I, you know, I love it, um, but. It can vary. Mm -hmm. um, I was just sitting here talking to Trink earlier. Um, you know, we have volunteers. I have a volunteer that drove every day. Wow. Faithfully. That's, a, that's like a full-time job. That is a full-time job, yeah. but it, he enjoyed it and, yeah. you know, and we loved him for it. And then I have one gentleman that drives maybe once a week. I have a, not quite sure, she works for the school district out here in um, the rental school district. And when she, she volunteers two days a week. Um, after school from 2.30 to 5.30. How great. It's like Wonderful. taking your own hours. That's yeah. a, that so, makes it really yes, nice. Exactly. You know, um, and now I just noticed, I was talking to Trink, I said, I just noticed that we had a right request for a Saturday, which I didn't even think about Saturdays. And so something that we need to kind of branch out and look at too, because you know, people do need to get to So some have you dollars. not been providing service on Saturdays? No, this is, ah. you know, you know, we do provide a vehicle for Sunday for some of the churches in, uh -huh. in our area. Uh -huh. 
but we've never um, really branched out. So if Saturday. somebody had Saturdays available and wanted to do one Saturday a month, would you oh, take absolutely. as little as that? Absolutely. I tell See, people. that makes it so much easier to volunteer when you yes. can do that, you know? I mean, it's you know fun. there is not yeah. a huge commitment. I mean, yeah. you said you're, you're you tell me what you like, and I just work around it. That's great. You know, That's um, great. so we try to keep it simple and easy for the driver as possible. Tell me, give me a give me an example of some something that was fulfilling to you when you were driving, or somebody you've worked with, or that you've heard mm -hmm. about. That um, you know, it's just some interchange, you know, exchange between the driver and and one of your clients that was. I think Pretty truly good. what Leslie mentioned of a spouse having the great privilege of going to see their spouse in another living situation. I think I mean, that's, that that's perhaps gotta be is hard. The, I mean, yeah. how hard would that be to, especially if you've lived with somebody for years and, years, yeah. and then to be in a separate place? Exactly. Yeah. We had a situation not too long ago with um, one of our drivers, Michael, um, where um, he was dropping off a Pick, was getting ready to pick up a client from the Gretchen Senior Center. She was taking an exercising class. And she um, said that she felt kind of faint. She started to turn white. Um, he says, mm -hmm. well, you know, sit down. We're going to get you home as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And then he got her to the destination. And um, she still looked a little pale. And he was, you know, doing, checking her grip and talking to her and see if she was coherent and finally made a decision that he should call 911. Wow. Um, they did come. They did take her to the hospital. She ended up staying a couple of nights. Um, Leslie. So she Thank was God in the first stage of having a stroke. Yes. Wow. So, you know, it's... <laughs> they do you know, more than just drive, they, then, we do don't they? Just drive. <laughs> You know, we look out for our riders. Yeah. Um, you know, we do... Sometimes we may be the only one they see for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I try to you know, tell the drivers, if you notice a change, um, physical or mental, um, let me know. We will contact an emergency contact person and, you know, and let them know what we see and at least put them on notice. Do you do a, a personal interview with these people before they actually start driving for you? We do a, a over the phone over assessment. The phone interview. Okay. So, so we, you kind of have an idea how they interact with you, You're talking about people. drivers or? To drivers. Or, dri drivers. drivers. Oh. Yeah, we do a personal interview. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. They, because it seems a, like it's really a, um, it's a customer service job. It is. You have to so, have a love for yeah, people. If you don't have those skills, then mm -hmm. forget it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's, it, you know, people said, well, I've been driving forever and, you know, and that's fine. I, but it's, 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 it's the lot, personal it's aspect that. that's yeah. that's more important. Yeah. Anyone can be taught to drive. It's that that caring and that understanding and the people that you're going to be serving. Right. That's important, especially for me yeah. to know that um, you know we're trusting with you know vital people in our community, and we want to make sure that they're safe and that you're looking out for the best interests of our clients. Well, and like you said, Leslie, if if this is the only interaction they have with another human being, possibly all day, maybe even yes. all week, right? then it better be a good one, you yes. know? And, and Give them a good smile, you know, ask them how they are. You exactly. Know, talk you know. about, I, I bet. Leslie, you can assure that. Right. I bet you have people that just spill their guts and share their lives because <laughs> they have somebody well, to listen to them. Yeah, yeah you get that too. Yeah. And, then you get and that's some, okay, that's yeah, fun. Yeah, exactly. You can I, a I lot tell of cool people, stuff about people. <laughs> I tell people that, you know, believe it or not, I'm not always a talker and yeah. sometimes I sit there. And, and to me, driving is, you know, especially these days, driving can be a little stressful, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, can be rewarding also, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. But my, you know, attentions are on the road. So I always tell people, I say, if you want to talk, go ahead. I'm a good listener. Yeah, that's great. You know, you know um, I have to concentrate, so I won't be responding all the time. Talk, but you no, go ahead, and I'm listening. I'm, I'm listening, yeah, yeah. and 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 in the, in the meantime, I'm keeping you safe and paying attention to the road. That's great. Now, there, you have a few different programs within Ride Connection, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. What, um, what are those? How many do you have? And give me some we details. We would love to share um, information about two of our newest programs. Okay. One is our Veterans Transportation Program. And that is focused on veterans and spouses to provide transportation to them. And those that are often the drivers we recruit are veterans themselves. Uh -huh. That's a good So good there is just there. a beautiful bond. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't, the drivers do not have to be veterans. They do to, not to have no. to be. Yeah. No. Okay. But they have to feel, you know, especially. They have to appreciate the, right. what, yes. the, what the veterans have Indeed. done for our country. Yeah. And of course yeah. they have. So. 
that program is exciting. It's relatively new. Um, we're able to reimburse our drivers for that to the federal rate, oh, um, right. which is 55 and a half cents a mile. Right. Then um, the, our other program is um, titled Ride Together. Oh, I don't know about that one. And um, Ride Together allows an individual, um, let us say, um, Leslie has a mother who needs to go places on a regular basis, or not on a regular basis, but really only feels comfortable with Leslie, let us say. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And she could ask Leslie to be her driver, and Leslie in turn would drive her where she needs to be, you know, 24-7 actually. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. At the end of the month, um, they will compile a monthly uh, log, mileage log, and submit oh. it to us and ride to action, and then we will reimburse the driver for wow. 40 cents a mile. That's great. I was doing that for my mom. I didn't know yes. that would have been, you know, that would have been helpful. Yes. Because sometimes it's, it gets expensive. It, it, it gets expensive. when the gas rate goes up and down all the time. It does, and it's just such a reassurance for um, the customer to be with those they love and respect yes, and course. can feel comfortable with. Well, especially if they're appointments like medical appointments, which yes. can be scary for anybody, right. no matter what age you are. But those can be yeah. very difficult. Or just, for, especially for older people, going into situations where they're they're not, you know, they don't feel comfortable. That's It's a really good to have a family member or somebody it they is. trust to have them along. Yeah. So we have family members, we have next door neighbors, we have um, the full spectrum of individuals who are able to and wish to be drivers for right. their special people. So how does that work if, if, if I, say, had a next door neighbor who um, needed my assistance once a week, what, what about if it was something just like going to the store? Mm -hmm. Would it, something like that qualify? Mm -hmm. yes. I, I want yes. to take that person once a week to the store. Perfect. Do I just call you and, and what happens? Yes. Um, you would call and you would get a packet of information sent to you, the, all the application materials and such okay. needed. And is it, is, are the requirements the same as your volunteer yes. drivers? So yes. you have to pass a background check and the DMV check exactly. and, and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yes. And then great. to do the monthly um, log. And, and so you just turn the monthly, you turn the log in once mm -hmm. a month. That's pretty easy. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very, fairly yeah. easy. Yes. Yeah. It's a good example. This is so weird. I, um, I have a friend that was going to the Catholic Cascade Athletic Club. Uh -huh. And he says, you know, I've been taking this lady home every now and then. I said, really? And um, I said, huh, that name sounds familiar. So I'm thinking, I know who she is. <laughs> so I said, oh, that's one of our writers. So I talked to him. I said, hey, you're taking her home anyway. Why don't you sign up to be a volunteer driver? And uh, he says, really? I said, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so well, yeah, so um, find out he was taking someone else home. He was taking about three people home. Wow. Out of the goodness of his heart. Yes. And so I said, we can help you. Now, when you go, I just need you to pick up these people on the way and drop them off. That is so And great. I said, so he says, really? And I said, all you do is just teach class. And he says, oh, okay, I'm sold. So That's he's been great. doing this for about a couple of months now. I love it. And, and it's working out. It's working out. And he even, um, I seen him not too long ago, and he says, Leslie, you know, I probably could do a couple more yeah. rides. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you know, sometimes, you know, people ask you for a ride and, and you want to do it, but it's like, okay, well, i got this, this much, much gas, gas left in my yes. tank and I don't have any money, you know, yeah, to buy any. Perfect. So that's a great opportunity for somebody to help somebody out yet not yeah. really hurt themselves. In the right. Same so, I, you know, that's a, I, I use that example because it's, it's funny because people don't think about that, mm -hmm. but that is a good example yeah. of how we can help, you know, because uh, this one gentleman that he was taken home lived about six miles the opposite direction. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so, so it wasn't convenient it, for It him. wasn't as convenient, yeah. you know. He says, oh, I don't mind doing it, which is fine, but, you know, it does yeah. Yeah. hit the pocket but yeah, it sure does. quite a bit. So these are things that when people say, well, you know, I do do that. Hey, maybe I should call Ride yeah, Connection yeah, to see if I, love I can it. get that's reimbursed. That's really, yeah, uh, that's one of those thinking outside the box things, you know, that coming up with that idea. I think that's a great one. Love it. We're just about out of time. Is there anything else that we need to know about Ride Connection before we... It's we, the best yeah. place to volunteer. It sounds great. I love the, uh, the flexibility. Yes, yes the flexibility wonderful. and Good. just the human connection Good. is... It's, 
It's worthwhile. Yes, it Again. is worthwhile and greatly needed. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Trink. Thank you, Leslie, so much thank for you. being on here today. And thanks for watching Community Hotline tonight. Hope you've enjoyed hearing about Ride Connection and the, the great volunteer opportunities they have. You can see that there's, a, there's something for everybody who's a good driver out there and want to help out. This, this might be the opportunity you've been looking for. So please do contact them if you are interested or if you're in need of a ride. That's one place you should check out. Thanks for watching this edition of Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. We'll see you next week.